So, today we are going to discuss about quantum algorithms. The most impressive example is Peter Shor's factorization algorithm that suggests that quantum mechanics allows factorization in polynomial time instead of the exponential time and could have a dramatic impact on the field of data security. Okay. Um, this is the most impressive one. However, uh, this takes a little bit more of understanding, so we will deal with it later. The other significant algorithm is the one which we will take up first today is more known as the search algorithm. This significant algorithm was developed by Love Grover for quantum search. Classically, for a single element search within n elements, one needs to look up n by 2 elements on an average before finding the non-zero output. That is, requires an order n log 2 n, but the Grover's algorithm does this job by looking at an average of n to the power half, basically root n times. So, this advantage that is achieved by quantum search is something that we will discuss today. <coughs> so, in order to get to quantum algorithms, what are the significant steps? Uh, some of the basic ideas we have already discussed, so we will see how this one evolves. Grover's algorithm was invented by Love Grover in the year 1996. It is useful for search in unstructured database, that is in the case where the data set is not arranged in a way so that you can look after one of the other. Because if you have an arranged data set, then the way of searching it can be done much faster by using classical structures. However, for example, to search a needle in a haystack or to search the name of a person living in a known address in a regular telephone directory, these are very hard problems and this can be done by using this technique. It is also applicable for salesmen to find out a route his plan for selling items, all these kinds of applications, this particular problem is uh, applicable. In the classical case, for any of these above problems, it takes an order n uh, time, but these searches can be sped up by the quadratic factor to order square root of n by choosing the quantum search algorithms, which is also known as the Grover's algorithm. The basic idea behind this algorithm is to come up with a technique which is not going to look at the data set one by one, but it is going to do it in a quantum way so that it is done at a much faster rate. That is the basic idea. The oracles have the ability to recognize solutions in the search problem. The recognition is signaled by making the use of an oracle qubit in this particular case because it is going to be quantum case. So, the oracle will be an unitary operation which can be defined as uh, the operation of the qubit on, so defined as the operator O which works on the set that we are looking at such that we create a functional dependence of the two, uh, where q is a single oracle qubit, which is flipped if the function is equal to 1 and it is unchanged otherwise. So, basically the setup of the oracle as an unitary operator can be defined in this particular way, where by using the single qubit q, which is our oracle qubit. The idea is to make it flip when the function changes, that is when I have found the solution, the search that you are looking for or it remains unchanged. So, as long as the operator does not give the result of being flipped, we continue doing the process, we look for the searching. In the equation given below, the state of the oracle qubit is unchanged which is easily observable. So, for example, when you take a state like this and uh, we finally see what is going on with it, the oracle qubit keeps rem remaining the same which means that I can keep on using it over and over again. So, that is the idea behind an oracle that the oracle should keep on reporting the right solution in spite of 
uh, not changing. Okay. In a simplified form, therefore, the oracle can be written in this form, where if you have the qubit, then you are going to have the function, which is going to have this uh, minus 1 f of x to the power f of x times the qubit that we are looking for. So, in other words, the oracle does not know the solution, but can recognize it and against our common intuition, it is possible to do the letter without changing the format. So, in, the most important part here to remember is that it does not change the oracle bit. An example of that you already have, we have seen it before in case of the Deutsch algorithm, where the black box, which we call the oracle, is the one which can recognize the solution, whose internal working is represented by a binary function. <coughs> so, once we put it through the oracle, the functional form would be giving out either 0 or 1, although the oracle keeps it the same way. So, basically I can keep using the oracle over and over again and get the algorithm go. And this is one of the ideas of making sure that I can, we can go ahead and apply quantum concepts to develop a faster way of doing the computing. So, now given this background, it is understood that there will be several iterations that will be necessary to get the solution from this search algorithm. So, the quantum search algorithm consists of repeated application of a quantum subroutine known as Grover's iteration or Grover operator. In the classical sense, when we were supposed to search, we were supposed to go through each and every data point to be able to get to the solution. In this particular case, it consists of repeated application of the quantum subroutine instead of having to look through each and every data that is the basic idea. <clears throat> so, in other words, the steps of the Grover iteration is number one is to apply the oracle O. So, first of all, we have to set up an oracle as we discussed in such a way that it can recognize what we are looking for the search. Then we need to apply the oracle, apply the Hadamard transform. Now, Hadamard transform is something which we have applied before, which we have learnt about before. This transformation essentially uh, takes the qubits and mixes them up. So, if you take two qubit situation, then it will give equal weightage and put them together. That is the idea of Hadamard transform. So, we will again revisit that to uh, iterate our memory, but generally this is how the transform is. Then we will do a conditional phase shift on the computer with every computational basis set except the 0 receiving a phase shift of minus 1. So, that is how we will take our data set from x to x with this particular functional dependence, where we will get this. Uh, so, this is essentially inverse inversion about mean. So, in essence, this conditional phase shift on the computer, which every computational basis set except 0 receives a phase shift of this is almost like inversion about the mean of the of the entire data set. That is what we will do. And then again, we will apply the Hadamard transform, so that we can get back to the data set as we had before and be able to understand what we have just done. So, these are the steps. So, in other words, if you want to write it in terms of the circuit, this circuit for the Grover iteration with all the four steps that we just mentioned looks like this. We have the n qubits which need to be loaded up. <clears throat> then we have the oracle workspace that we have just discussed. Once we put this together inside the oracle, it is essentially undergoing a transform where the functional de decision as to whether uh, the function value is 1 or not is being found, so that you apply the oracle and get the solution. And then you again do a Hadamard transform, apply, you do the Hadamard transform, apply the phase shift, 
um, around the mean about 0 it remains the same. It means that it is actually doing an inversion about the mean and then apply the Hadamard transform again. <coughs> In some sense therefore, the Grover's iteration requires only a single oracle call okay, because once you have set it up put it in the oracle web sp uh, workspace you just need to set it up once to be able to find out whether you have got the solution or not. The combined effect of steps 2, 3 and 4, so 2, 3 and 4, so this was our first step <coughs> is that we have applied a Hadamard on this um, initial set and a reverse Hadamard and depending on if you are doing it once or that many times we will have it to the uh, this operation applied that many times. So, that we are able to get the solution and our wave function therefore, is represented by this uh, 1 over so it is a normalized case 1 over n to the power half x <coughs> vector. So, the Grover iteration g then theref can therefore, be written as this particular set g is equal to uh, 2 times uh, wave function put in the different ways minus i and then the operation that we are applying which is the oracle operation. So, this is the uh, iteration process that we will continue and uh, once we keep on doing this iteration we will be finally, getting the solution. So, this is the iterative way of doing this particular uh, approach of Grover's algorithm. So, let us see how it looks. We can also uh, visualize this geometrically because uh, many a times this uh, entire process can be understood much better if we uh, visualize this geometrically. So, this can in that sense be regarded as a rotation in the 2D space and that is a perhaps a much uh, more intuitive way of understanding how this is going. Uh, in this process, uh, we can we can actually uh, look at this entire process again in the same way. Uh, maybe I should show the figure before I go ahead with this. So, here is the geometric visualization where we have this uh, 2D uh, axis and this is my this is the state that we are looking at. So, this is my wave function and uh, depending on uh, whether I am rotating it uh, which whichever way. So, <coughs> so uh, this is my state alpha, uh, this is my state beta, these are the two components of the wave function that I have. Now, my uh, operation can essentially take it down uh, one way or the other and uh, around one of the mean positions. So, if alpha is my mean position, I can have this go uh, down by theta by 2 or theta by 2 in either direction or we can go up the entire direction by theta. So, basically it is a reflection about the wave function that we can go in either direction. Uh, the operation performs a reflection about O and the product of these two reflections is a rotation. So, this is my uh, operation which is essentially doing the reflection and as a and the product of these two reflections is a rotation. Let me again go back to the earlier slide to essentially indicate all the mathematics associated with this. <coughs> the, uh, the sum over all the x which are the solutions to the search problem and double prime say su summation prime of x and summation double prime of x are the two sums. One of them is the one which is solutions of the search problem and the other one double prime one is the sum over all x which are not solutions to the search problem. So, there are two cases so, basically one which is the case with the solution and the case which is without the solution. Then we can set up two different uh, states say alpha and beta. This is what I was trying to represent when I went back to the other picture. So, we will go back to this but after setting it up now. See alpha and beta are the two cases where we have set up between solution versus no solution. 
So, the initial state may be represented as something which is um, a superposition of these two conditions where we have the solution and we do not have the solution and that is the way how you can read it and then the oracle operator performs a reflection about the vector such that it will, uh, it will rotate it such that we will be able to find the description of the state amongst that between the uh, solution case and the one which does not have the solution case and based on these we can get to our solution. So, we have a solution case with solution is this one and without solution, without solution is the one where uh, the alpha. So, now my wave function is somewhere in between alpha and beta which basically means that it is a superposition of the two or having contribution from both of them. So, if we consider an angle uh, theta such that the cosine theta by 2 is uh, is the uh, weightage factor n minus m over n root over square root, then we can tell that um, the wave function is cosine theta by 2 alpha plus sine theta by 2 alpha beta. Okay. So, that is how we have set up the wave function. Now, the <coughs> Grover application in the state essentially takes it to cosine 3 theta by 2 sin 3 theta by 2 which is where this is, this is the rotation we are getting and if we apply it k times then this will essentially be a rotation which will bring it back and forth around that point all the time. So, that is the idea behind applying the Grover's algorithm over and over again. In fact, this also tells you one very interesting thing that uh, there is a point and this we will do it later in a more detailed fashion, where we will show that uh, there is a point beyond which the solution finding uh, essentially uh, oscillates around the actual signal. So, you find out the solution by using Grover's algorithm and if you keep on running the iteration, there is nothing like further improvement or something, it essentially oscillates back and forth uh, around the actual signal, actual solution. So, once you have gotten your solution, uh, you cannot really just say that you know you can continue on doing it to get to anything better, it will just be oscillating around the um, actual solution that is the idea. So, anyway, the number of times the Grover's iteration has to be applied <coughs> has an upper bound therefore, uh, beyond which it essentially means that it is just going to oscillate and that is given by this uh, function, uh, that is given by this r which is uh, roughly, uh, which is basically coming from the equations that I just wrote in the last, uh, last slide. Uh, so, if you apply this, how many times do you apply and you get a number beyond which it has no meaning. So, that is the value that you can actually come down to pi over 4 square root of uh, n over m. That means, that my r has the order of square root of n over n. Grover's iteration must be performed in order to obtain a solution to the search problem and that takes an order which is square root of n over m. So, <coughs> the, the basic idea behind this quantum search therefore, is that we are using a black box oracle O which performs the transformation uh, as given in this function uh, such that when the function has some values except the one that this, uh, it is going to uh, set up the value of f x as 1, otherwise it will have the other answer f x equal to 0 and there are n plus 1 qubits in the state which is uh, 0. The output uh, is going to be the function uh, x 0 which is your solution and the runtime will be of order uh, uh, in this particular case order 2 to the power n operations, it succeeds with probability of order 1, which means it is almost always, it is going to be successful, uh, it is just that there is a time bound beyond which um, it just keeps on oscillating. So, the procedure involves uh, setting up the uh, initial state, uh, then applying a Hadamard transform on the first n qubits and uh, h x to the last qubit 
which is the result of uh, using the op, uh, uh, on the last qubit x is the not gate as we have said and, and uh, then we apply the grover's iterator, iteration with uh, r uh, with this uh, 2 to the power n over m so we have basically chosen the special case where our n by uh, m has is of the order 2 to the power n so uh, we get this and then once we get the solution which is of this order this is our uh, oracle qubit so we we preserve that and our solution is x0 which is the first n qubits that we are looking for so that is the basic algorithm behind the grover's uh, case and here is how the circuit looks like uh, this particular um, case often is also known as a gate as it is an unknown function which tells us if we have a function so this is the oracle uh, which often sometimes are is also known as the grover gate in some cases uh, is an unknown function which gives us uh, which tells us if we have an answer so <clears throat> this is how the grover application of the grover algorithm looks like the g gate or something and uh, this we apply it on the on the order of uh, root n times and we should be able to get our uh, proper solution and this is our measurement as we know this is uh, what we have set up as our measurement state and this oracle wave space uh, workspace always uh, maintains the cube oracle qubit which does not change as a result of this process <coughs> so the uh, one very important thing to note here as a result of this is the optimality of this process the classical algorithms take order n operations for searching n items grover's algorithm however can search n items by calling the oracle only uh, square root of n times and so it is uh, at least quadratic speed up it is also shown that grover's algorithm is optimal that is any quantum algorithms requiring at least uh, square root of n times of the oracle calling for searching and uh, one of the important things however important to mention here that this uh, entire picture is essentially true when it is an unstructured uh, st uh, data set uh, this is because if you have already gotten a data set which is sort of um, uh, structured in the sense that it is ordered if it is ordered in some way say from higher to lower numbers or something like that then the this idea of um, benefit from the grover search does not exist also because um, in that case the operational procedures required to find the solution is of a different kind in most cases for instance in case of uh, classical case you if you have the prior knowledge that this data set is structured in some way you will not have to look through the entire data set and therefore the optimality or the advantage uh, that is required or necessary and which comes from grover's algorithm is absent and therefore um, there is no benefit in that sense when we use uh, the other kind of data set so this particular uh, algorithm is hugely effective in the case of unstructured data set so that is uh, the main issue and a, a small note about this other step that i have been talking about which is the uh, setting the value in such a way that everyone around the zero uh, is going to change their sign whereas the one at this at the zero remains the same and that is uh, where we who have we have mentioned that the values go to minus the case when it is about the zero values otherwise it remains the same so this is the inversion about mean so for any data set <coughs> that is one of the steps that we have used uh, what we have done is that around the mean position which for example is this case alpha any number which is uh, around the alpha mod alpha or the mean value it will be changing its value 
whereas if it is on, on one side of it, it will remain in the same. So, that is the idea about inversion about the mean which is also applied in this case very effectively to able to mark out the right point. So, what we have done today in today's class is we have gone through one of the very basic algorithms, but one of the very important algorithms which was discovered by Love Grover um, uh, for quantum search and uh, it turns out to have at least a quadratic improvement over the earlier uh, over the classical uh, search algorithms and uh, what we expect to do is to see a lot more of this algorithm because search turns out to be a very important part of um, any of the computer um, problems, uh, computational problems because you can always assume that you will have an answer which you will have to look for whenever you are doing your problem. So, that way this is a much more general problem to look for uh, and in most cases in those cases you do not have any structure structural knowledge so essentially an unsorted set that you are looking through to find your solution and therefore, uh, Grover search happens to be a very useful set of uh, search algorithm uh, which is uh, which has an immense benefit once you go to quantum approach. So, this is the one which you have done the other one which is the Shor's factorization we will take it up on a later case. Uh, most likely we will look into some more aspects of Grover's algorithm in the next class where we will perhaps look at uh, its implementation or its other features as we get into the next class. Thank you.